You made it. I made it. I apologize for completely blowing up our schedule. This is uh, kind of first world problems, growth of the agency. I've got a new executive assistant. I'm in Vegas right now. And uh, with the automation and the executive assistant, we canceled our recording time. But everyone was super cool. I think this is one of those growing pain problems that I hope law firms are experiencing, right? Not everything goes smoothly, exactly. but as you're growing, putting in those processes to not cancel the very important LHLM uh, recording sessions needs to go into uh, my list of things to make sure we don't do again. Well, I am grateful for your willingness to be vulnerable and to talk about nah. how not everything's perfect all the time. And, um, you know, but it's, but I think that, I think that's what's valid about this for listeners is, is like we get, you know, Conrad and I, we talk about automation, great experience, you got to make sure that you're uh, working through these. Uh, and there's going to be bumps no matter how hard you try to plan this stuff, right? Um, anyway, so maybe a, a moment of empathy and sympathy for those who have botched their scheduling in the past. <laughs> but enough piling on, Conrad. What else are we talking about today? So, Guy, we always like to start with the news. And we've got a very short news segment. But after that, we pre previewed this concept last pod. My is my CRM bigger than yours? The CRM measuring contest, and then uh, because it is the end of Q1, we're going to talk about go back to our business planning and talk about what you should be thinking about, or should you think be thinking about anything at your Q1 review. Music. And welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing, teaching you how to promote, market, and make fat stacks for your legal practice, here on Legal Talk Network. When we come back, the news. Oh, crap. That's an so, old timey news I, segment. I, I like love that. the new news music. Although I, you I did do. put a fake break in there. I don't know if we're gonna have to re-record <laughs> that or not. No, it'll, it'll Adam will magically take my oh crap out of that. <laughs> and you'll just have to hear it right now. Okay. So I am at the Mass Torts Made Perfect, hardly news. I did a session with two agency owners this morning on what to expect from Google in the next 12 months. Um, what should we expect? Which, What's the teaser there? What should we expect from Google in the next 12 months as a news clipping headline? Uh, uh, Pay-per-click rates and LSA rates. Get You will spend more on pay-per-click and LSAs and get less from that because of the ongoing deliberate conflation of your branded queries, especially in LSAs, and pay-per-click. That I would, was that's very close to mine. one of the many <laughs> ironic takeaways. Mine is just more ads. More ads. We also Here's the other thing, and I was wrong on this, so it's important for us to note when we were wrong. I was all excited about SGE. Now, we've heard like 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 a like a the the dodo bird that there's been a sighting of SGE in the wild on occasion. I'm not sure I believe it. I'm not sure it's going to hit legal and boy oh boy it does not look like. I mean, they were talking about a early year. In fact, Guy, if you go back and listen to our pods from just December, you were like we may be seeing this as early as, you know, January 1st. Uh yeah. right now it looks like a dodo bird. So, um, all that excitement, shiny object Wah, 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 sad trombone. I kind of agree. I I still think this is where they're... I think they're out there. I haven't seen them. Um, and it seems like a natural... <laughs> I, I think Google's going to try to uh, pull an apple here and make Google I.O. their big, quote-unquote, light switch moment, even though they said they weren't going to have a light switch moment. But I... I'm still long on SG. I, I agree with you with shiny objects right. and the hype cycle, just like everything else. But... Uh, this is where they're going. This is the this is the ultimate closing of the ranks in the AI wars. So SGE and Sasquatch, very similar in characteristics. <laughs> Sasquatch okay. is not nearly making the revenue that Google's making, but <laughs> that's fair. fair. That's fair. fair. Okay. Um, 
You guys may... T- Keith, did you receive any emails from Google about UA? You want to share? Share that for I our did. listeners who, if you're a loyal listener, this will be boring. If you're a new listener, you should panic. So this is an email from April 2nd. Thanks to Adam because I lost mine and I don't know what happened to it. But uh, here it's uh, here it says April 2nd, 2024, just for the premise. On July 1st, 2024, Google Analytics 4 properties will have fully replaced Universal Analytics properties as previously announced. So if the, if you've been listening to this, we have failed you if you have not switched, migrated over to GA4 <laughs> prior to this date. But it sounds like this is the real date they're going to turn off Universal Analytics. And so if you're still running Universal Anal- Analytics, get some help. Because your analytics data is about to vanish. My read is if you are still running Universal Analytics, you're probably not reading your random emails from Google support to tell you to change Universal Analytics. No, but maybe your maybe your agency that you trust to run all this stuff has really wow. been sleep at the wheel. Would you like to name anyone, Guy? Nope. Okay. All right. Put differently, let me rephrase that for Guy because he's being polite and I will say what he's really trying to say. If your agency hasn't done this, fire your fucking agency. Probably at this, so, you know, we had this conversation a, a year ago. And at that time, I think you said the same thing. And I was like, well, you got to give them a little time. Now I agree with you. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. No more time. And uh, you can find Guy, new business at attorneysync.com. Uh, right, right. No, no, seriously. This is, um, this is, this is fire worthy for an agency. Okay. Yeah, this, this and would finally, be Guy. They're, you're doing an event in Detroit with one of our very, very good friends. If you're in the Detroit area, people, I will let Guy pump this up. I will encourage Guy to pump this up. Uh, pump local up. you in Detroit, tell us about it. So super grateful. Uh, I it's I wouldn't say I won a contest. They asked they they asked for community people to be like, hey, would you like to host local you? Local you, uh, it's a Sterling Sky property, I believe. Joy Hawkins. Joy Ann Hawkins. Yep. Yep. And um super grateful that I will be helping bring local you to Detroit. And uh if you're there, we'll put the link in the notes. And if you just search for local you, I'm sure you'll see it. But this is to me one of the premier places to learn from really, really outstanding uh local SEOs. And it's a great community. There's, it doesn't stop just at local U. It's a great community to get involved in if you're not there. Um, Sterling Sky, all the stuff that Joy's doing, big fan of. And uh, I'd love to see you in Detroit in the summer. I think the Tigers are in town, so maybe we'll catch a ball game or something too. But um, local U, come. And to tie this back to an earlier theme that we talked about, the grossness of paying to speak. Guy, you did not prostitute yourself by paying local you to bring this to Detroit. You're doing this in conjunction with them. So you can assume all of the content that you get at local you is awesome because it's been vetted and there are no pay to play speakers. Unlike See, myself again, sitting here in Las again, Vegas. You're, you're, again, miss, you're misquoting me. Uh, I am. I'm sure that there will be sponsors at local you. Oh, and, I'm uh, sure, and I'm sure that they will communicate who is a sponsor and who is not a sponsor. All right. But it's and, but but attorney sync is I, not a sponsor. Well, we're working through how that's going to work. So when that's ah, official, okay. I will officially announce whether or not attorney sync is okay. what attorney. I think we're there. Okay. There, there's different sponsorship things available, and I'm like, and we're trying to figure out which one attorney sync is going to be doing. But attorney okay. sync will be sponsoring. Just a matter of what it is. All right, this sounds like we may need to edit this part out. No. Okay, but <laughs> there's nothing right. wrong with that. Stand we told it. you it was a boring news cycle. There was one news <laughs> item about Conrad at a conference. We 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 ended this news cycle sandwich with Guy at a conference, and Yikes. there was a a non news item of Google closing down uh, UA. Okay, Lockwood, maybe you just cut this whole thing. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> Jeez, this is tough news day. But now that we've really got you all pumped up. We would love for you to like and subscribe at YouTube. Uh, keep the conversation going. Leave a comment. Um, and we're today, we're as Conrad mentioned, we're going to talk about uh, what I think of as the quarterly pulse. Uh, but you know, you're 90 days in, you're a quarter in to the to your new marketing. Uh, check out if you haven't checked it out already our episode, Diverse Marketing and 30 Days In. We talk about the first 30 days 
And so that's kind of a lead up to what we'll be talking about now that we're, you know, 90 days in. So check it out. Leave a comment. Ask a question. We'd love to hear from you on YouTube. So loyal listeners will remember last episode, we had a quick quip about my CRM is bigger than yours. And I promised that we would revisit that and we're revisiting it as promised. Right now, Guy, you are really big on the CRM and tactics to grow your database. And this ties in a little bit to uh, Google and the, the sunsetting of UA. More and more privacy, less and less information, less and less cookies. Um, why do you think CRM is so important? And why have you made that kind of pillar might, not, might be overstating, but really important for your clients? Well, it really comes from most of the time when we start a conversation with a lawyer, I'll ask something like, what are you doing to stay in touch with former clients? What are you doing okay. to stay in touch with referral sources? What are you doing to stay in touch with other people who might be wanting to consume some kind of information from your firm or have engagement with your firm? And largely the answer is not much. You know, maybe they send a card, you know, uh, once in a while, maybe they reach out. But um, to me, this is one of these really untapped areas of opportunity for law firms, especially so you know, let's think, let's talk macroeconomics here. Cost of ads going up or down, Conrad? I believe it is going up. Easier or harder to rank for non-brand organic queries in Google, Conrad? I believe it is getting harder. Um, are are the platforms giving us more or fewer targeting options for advertising? I believe the level of opacity brought to you by the platforms is increasing. Thank you. So all of these factors to me make your CRM, like that's your own, call it owned data. Um, that first party opted in former clients, referral sources, people in your community and your network, staying in touch with them is so, so important because they forget who you are. They forget what you do. And I, I was just having this conversation um, with Brian Glass the other day. You know, he gave me, he told a great story about it, but it's just, it was another story on the pile of how many times you're, you just think that people are just thinking about you all the time. And, you know, look, there's, there's other ways to, to keep top of mind awareness. And we've talked about affinity a lot, but to me, this is the, the growing, the, the number of engaged people that want to receive stuff from you should be a priority for your firm. Okay. That's why I, that's I, why I, I think I it's agree. so important. Okay. So uh, the CRM systems, are you, are, I'm curious how you break this out. Are you looking at their intake management software or their matter management software when you're talking about growing? My CRM is bigger than yours. Lo I love that question. And the answer is, <laughs> sadly, ideally, it would be in a in a true CRM product, right? Ah, um, like what? I don't know. What do you What do you like for CRM these days? Well, there are lots of different vendors yeah. who have who are your HubSpot. Your HubSpot. Person. Listening, I'm a very big HubSpot person because yeah. of the depth that it gives you. Uh, but but I, so for for the audience. I think mm -hmm. the reason I asked the question is this is not your matter management software because there's a very, very small percentage of people from your intake management software. And even if you go down to HubSpot, what you're actually tracking, like the reason I love HubSpot is it will track people's performance on our site for five months before they actually call us. So I have five months worth of data. That kind of stuff is magic, right? And, the, and, and the, what, what you're talking about being able to do, I do think requires some level of sophistication, but, but, in legal, because we have these two different systems, IMS and MMS, you need to move up into the intake management software because that's where all of the volume that doesn't turn into clients happens. If you're just leveraging your MMS, honestly, you're getting such a small sliver of what should be your overall CRM system. That's right. And, and ideally, they're integrated, right? They're seamlessly integrated so that that, that back 
that matter management business data is getting pushed back, is, is it communicating with the front end marketing and intake data so that you can say things like, go buy media for uh, contact records that became this l- fee for us. Right, right. Um, um, so I, I want to ask you this question. So now that we've established oh, and, and, where... And I would be remiss... I would be remiss. Don't be remiss. Do not be remiss. Men- on didn't this mention show. our sponsor as well as my uh, uh, investment. Full disclosure in Lawmatics, okay. and this is I think this is what Matt is working on, doing a great job, uh, moving the conversation forward in legal about CRM because again you know when Lawmatics isn't brand new anymore. Uh, but when he was back, when he started, it was like, yeah, you this was the, you know, what my answer was probably matter management or MailChimp. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, uh, yeah. So a uh, little foreshadowing there, Guy talking about his investment in Lawmatics. We may come back to this. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so, um, that, but, so, 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 so that answered the, go ahead. Uh, you're lead. You're it, leading. I, you, you believe that we should be working on building our CRMs. I don't disagree. You've also had tactical advice on how to actually make that happen. So it's great for you and me to sit here and talk about grow your CRM system, grow your database. What, how, how do you do that? Right? Help yeah. me out here. Get tactical. So the, the, the heavy lift, especially if you already have a bunch of contact records, is that first pass of segmentation and maybe tagging, but getting your list organized, that's the first step. And people get overwhelmed by this, and it's valid because, especially if you've got you know, ten thousand contact records that you think are are people who are opted in to receive messages from you, or you're a high volume uh, shop with a lot of people that you've that former clients or referral sources. But that's where the and chunk it out, you know, take small bites. That's a great thing to outsource too. I think if you can. Uh, not everything's outsourceable because a lot of these contact records, they might have limited information and you're the only one who knows why they're in the contact uh, system. Um, but get those tagged and segmented. And then I would, I would start prioritizing. I'd, I'd start making lists of like uh, former clients. Uh, those, and, and again, some of this can be, some of this should be specific content designed for that particular segment. Some of it can be a little bit more high touch, like, you know, you send out a happy Labor Day or happy New Year uh, check-in type of email to them. Um, but th- but that's more of like the existing, you know, right? So th- how do you yeah. grow it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we grow the it? Gro- the Where's growing the fertilizer? Is, yeah, the growing is, is that you got to get out and meet people. And you got to, so uh, one of the lists that, one of the lists that hopefully you have some, it's not, you know, it's maybe partial is, uh, you might, here's, let's use a, let's use a real life example. You're at MTMP. You should be yeah. making a list or tagging the people that you're meeting and talking to at MTMP and saying, Hey, you know, remember back at MTMP when we talked about, uh, when I was talking about the future of Google, here's a new video I did on the future of Google. That's the way to stay, to grow and stay in touch is as you meet people, you know, as you get, uh, and again, maybe some of it is you have a, um, a content offering that is multifaceted. It might be like a regular, you get a regular email uh, on a specific subject that you're passionate about. Maybe it's like a book, you like to do book reviews. Um, And and you get, you get that in when you're, when you're networking with professionals, great way to get professionals to opt in to be like, Oh yeah. Hey, I love getting your book reviews, blah, blah, blah. Now that all being said, those are like more like on the the referral side of the house. Like if you want to grow, remember the uh, getting people to opt into email you got to give them something of value. So that's not going to be like sign up to get my tips after a car accident. That that lead magnet serves a different person purpose. It might be though some kind of local community thing that you're involved in, and you might talk about those you know your affinities in the local community because that's the kind of stuff that people actually want to get message from you about. So I want to tie CRM into social. Yeah. Because I think CRM th- is, is social. It is exa- yes, and I think this is like a. I think most of the legal industry looks at CRM as some technical database somewhere, and they don't necessarily. And, and by the way, it's not that hard to tie it to LinkedIn. It's not that hard to tie it to 
uh, Twitter, or it's not that hard to tie it to Instagram or Facebook. And so part of this is making sure, and this, this is a tedious, awful job, but as you build out your CRM, you're also including those relationships on social. And that makes it so much easier to stay in touch with people because it's not just that email, right? Like, I think it's, 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 it's not that the staying in touch with people, it's a multimedia, multimedium, sorry, more accurately, multimedium strategy. And so, and it takes time and discipline to say, all right, I just picked up someone's business card or they were in the turkey trot that I sponsored and now I'm going to go out and find them on these different platforms. That takes time. It's outsourceable time. It's easily outsourceable time. But this is something that I really, really think should be happening. And I would look at the, the so there, there's, I, I've got my database that I'm going to populate with uh, social profiles. I would also look at those engaged social profiles as an extension of your CRM. They may not be sitting in your database with an email address, but it's the same concept. Your contacts through LinkedIn, it's a database. It's just not one that you control. It's not in your CRM, but there's no reason you can't make that happen as well. So I really look at these things as being really tied together. I totally agree with that. Um, and in fact, I was just I was going to just put a softball pitch out there for you, but... Does HubSpot oh. have integrations with social platforms? Why, yes, it does. I feel right. like... And, and there's a reason for that. Because of this. Because you, you yes. the relationships that you're managing in your CRM, you're having those conversations and nurturing those relationships in other places. Um, the other thing that I always think about with this, with the growing, the, the list and the opt-ins, there is, though, and you mentioned this before, and I think that talking about, maybe you can share some of... Uh, Maybe go deeper on this because you alluded to it. And, and this is part of the reason why I think it's a priority too. But your advertising options when you have the email opt-in. Yes. Talk to tell us what we mean by that when you're nodding and agreeing with me. What do you like about when you why do you light up when I say that? So the 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 problem with just branded display advertising is it's fundamentally untargeted. And it's it's usually a let's boil the ocean problem. When you have a CRM system, you can have highly targeted display advertising, which means that you can put for the same dollars, you can put that brand in front of using round numbers, a thousand people 20 times instead of 20,000 people one time. And the 20,000 people one time doesn't work. Right. But the thousand people 20 times does. Right. And so... And, and, and then, and it also means that you can, I'm, I'll pull this out. We, we use the turkey trot example all the time. Let's say you sponsor the turkey trot. You get the list of all the people who ran in the turkey trot. Your advertising doesn't have to be what to do when you're hit by a, by a tractor trailer. It can be around people who are into running or supporting charities um, or whatever that might look like. And so it enables you to avoid this boil the ocean problem and really target people that you are into and that have engaged with you and that you're involved in in the community. Yes, uh, super powerful. And it also allows you to personalize your messaging to where they are in their journey, which is so, so important, right? Um, yep. Anyway, there's a, there's a lot of good stuff that you can do if you, so you can go look, you don't have to take our word for it. Go look up first party data. Uh, that's what you're trying to do there. And with that, we're already out of time. Conrad's got to go. I got to go. Hey, except for the fact that we have another segment. But good, good thinking. Um, I love what you <laughs> to take bungle an ad break. it. To take an ad break. Me. Oh, to take we, an ad break. Yes. We got to go we're take going, an ad break, I thought. We're going we're to take an ad, ad break. <laughs> Dear friend, are you enjoying this ranty edition of Lunch Hour Legal Marketing? If you've gotten something valuable out of this, please share it with somebody. Post it on social media or send them an email. Great way to stay in touch, by the way. It would be huge. In your CRM system. Right, exactly. And from your CRM system. So hopefully you listened to our segment about 30 days in. So the idea was we're 30 days into the year or 30 days into a marketing campaign or you're 30 days in with a new agency or you're 30 days in with a new marketing director. And now we want to take that same, so go listen to that episode. Now we want to take that theme as a continuation. What do you do now that we're 90 days in? What are we looking at? And 
Um, I'm a big EOS person. So we run EOS and we do what would be called quarterly pulses. There's a lot of different ways to talk about this quarterly business review. Um, but it's essentially looking at the business one quarter in or looking at your marketing one quarter in. And Conrad, what types of things do you like to start talking about 30 days in? Definitely nothing 30 days in. Um, and, and our point... I'm sorry. Of our, I meant 90 days I know, in. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. You're all good. Conrad, what do you <laughs> like to review 90 days in? So the reason I said nothing with 30 days in is you don't know anything yet. You're, it's too right. fast. You're looking at stuff too quickly. Yeah, there, there's, there's been no trends. There's, it's just too fast. So slow down. What we told you when we did our 30 days in is don't do anything. Stop panicking 30 days in. But 90 days in, you're 25% of the way through the year. And I think the key here, and I think this is missed. I, we always kick agencies around, but it's missed by agencies. Is If you are doing a quarterly review with your agency, which you should be, and I'm just making the blanket assumption that your agency is meeting with you in detail every, every, every quarter. Um, if they're not, you have an agency that's not really thinking about you. But you, re, you, the law firm, need to take the reins on this conversation and make sure that that conversation is around your business objectives. And if you have done a good job with annual planning... Right In 2023, we sat down in Q4 to talk about what we wanted 2024 to look like. And we have some smart goals, which means that they are quantitative. And we're going to look at those smart goals 90 days in and see where we are. So it all is built around your annual business goals and your progress towards reaching them. What it's not is tactical data about an individual marketing campaign. It's not because we're not talking about marketing tactics. We're talking about achieving a business goal. And that's you, that, and, and agencies like to control this narrative because they want to show you graphs that look like they're going up and to the right. But, and, and if, that's, if the ad up and to the right is getting to your business goals, celebrate. Merry Christmas. Buy yourself a bottle of scotch and be happy with your agency. Um, but if they're not, even if it's not your agency's fault, might not be our fault, but it's still our problem. We need to get back on track. Right. So totally agree. Um, but, you know, it, it, it begs the question, right? So uh, first, you got to be aligned on what those business goals are. And so hopefully, you know, if you did that at the start. Well, you're, um, we're presupposing that you've talked with your agency and they know where you're trying to go. Well, well or, you, or even if you're doing this yourself, it presupposes that you have business goals that are, you know, something like, Give me an example of a uh, an annual planning business goal that you might think about. Gross and gross oh, sure. revenue, profitability, uh, revenue is a great one. Uh, number, number of, of new cases clients, signed, number of consultations yeah. delivered, number right. of new clients, new lawyers that we've hired. Right? These are right. all business growth goals, but none of them are. We're going to trim our H one tags, or we're going to drive oh, yeah. down our CPC rates, or any right. of that stuff. So, so uh, let's let's. I was trying to. What I want to do is is like. Because what happens here is, is like, okay, let's, we have those goals. And, and part of the EOS quarterly review process is, are we on track or off track uh, through the quarter? And, you know, yeah. you can say things like, well, look, depends on stuff, but you should have a, an idea of what, whatever, the, even if it's a leading indicator of success, did are we moving in the direction in those first 90 days that we have we're starting to see that and if it's, if it's an ads campaign you know if it's a high volume ads campaign you probably are collecting pretty significant data through even open case 90 yeah, days yeah i right? i mean <clears throat> it, we're, we're presupposing at this point in time that there's enough that your ad spend is large enough for you to have a validation of whether or not from a cost per case ba- and by the way let me be clear on this. When we say ads, this sounds like a direct response conversation. It is a pay-per-click. I'm bidding on, you know, uh, 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 motorcycle accident lawyer Tallahassee. So that is a direct response, which means someone is looking for it. Someone's clicking on the ad and someone is hiring you um, or at least having that consultation. So it's a direct response thing. You should be able to, after three months, have a feel for what your cost per consultation, at the very least, your cost per consultation is with enough data 
to decide whether or not this continues to make sense. Now, if your ad spend is $1,000, you don't. You do not right. have enough data to look at. You, you won't have enough data in three years to look at. Um, Maybe not, but, uh, you know, depending on, you know, it's, it, it comes down to, you know, cost per click. How many clicks can you get? How well those clicks are converting into calls and then how well those calls are converting. But, but looking at that, that I think is a very important thing to do in those first 90 days, especially too, because you're going to identify bottlenecks, right? You're, you might find, yep. oh yeah, intake's broken here, or we're not answering the phone properly there. 90, day, or 90 days in, you can start to, you have enough data, I think, again, assuming you're doing any kind of significant volume, but big picture, all in calls, you can start identifying some of those problems, uh, those you know leaks in your funnel, so to speak. So the way I would look at this, and to, to, this, is, this is a very, very rough way to think of it. You, you said you have enough data, right? And we've been kind of talking about like, is there enough information for us to make a good decision? The question that I would ask is, if you look at the number of cases that you've generated in three months from a marketing channel, direct marketing channel, and you give that plus three or minus three, right? Plus three or minus three. We've got three more cases. It looks amazing. We've got minus three more cases. It looks terrible. You don't have enough data to make that assessment. But if it doesn't change your outcome, if you go plus or minus three, now you probably, and again, very rough. This is probably my stats professor from University of Michigan is rolling over in his podium. But um, that's the way to think about this, right? That's right. And I was really more talking about like, oh, we noticed that we're missing 25% of our calls. Yes. <laughs> that, that one's more like you don't need that much data to recognize you're missing. There's a big hole somewhere. But you're right on actual making like tactical decisions uh, and campaign yeah. decisions. Like, yeah, you got to have a lot of data. The other thing, even bringing it back to this quarterly pulse. So uh, I'm just reading from the, the meeting pulse agenda. Uh, Review your VTO. So that assumes that we're not going to go all EOS, but some things that you might look at in your, what they call the VTO, but it's really in talking about like your marketing strategy more generally. And they would talk about things like they're the three uniques. Are, are you re, are you reevaluating if the things that you think make Great. you stand out really make you stand out? Or are there different ones? Or did we get that wrong? Right. The positioning stuff. Um your target audience is your list right? Like, do you need to adjust who you're go who you're targeting? You know, do you have to be? Do you want to go a little more specific? You know, are if you've been doing divorce, maybe you want to go. Uh, we want to help you know moms who are contemplating divorce or something like that. That one's come up a lot in examples. I don't know why. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> no Freudian slip, I guess. Like, I don't know. Um, go backwards. But, yeah. So uh, so reviewing your target audience, your list refining that, that quarterly, quarterly pulse is a great time to do that. Um, and here's another one, review previous quarters rocks and EOS terminology, that's just priorities. So did you set pri those, those smart goals that Conrad was talking about, or if there are, if there are initiatives or marketing priorities that you would set from the prior quarter, how did you do on those? Did you complete them or did your agency execute on them or were there holdups Were you a delay in that process? Um, so However, whatever the uh, the priorities that are supposed to be executed, whether you're marketing, if you're a marketing director, are you setting those priorities? Are you hitting those priorities? Is your are your partners hitting those priorities? It might not just be a strictly like measurable metric. It's a you know this was a uh, a priority that we agreed to. Did we hit it or did we not hit it? Then the other thing you do establish the next quarter's priorities, and then that naturally. So now you've now again EOS language. You've you've taken it from the scorecard. Are we on track to hit our one-year plan from a business metric standpoint? Um, yes or no? Why? Could that might that might tease out some issues for you. Then you look at your priorities. You know, did your priorities uh, get completed? Is your list right? You got your th unique selling propositions. That's gonna th those conversations though help you tease out issues that you can discuss and solve, so that when you go into the next quarter, you're you're changing the narrative because that's what ha well, the other thing that I that so frustrating to see over and over again is. You have the meeting, but nothing comes out of the meeting that you're going to do differently to improve. And so you're now you're another you're doing the same thing another quarter. You're doing the same thing another quarter. Yeah. Okay. I I think you're onto something here. This is this is really important. And I think again we I kick agencies all the time. The the report at the end of the quarter or the end of the month or whatever it might be. And if this is the the quarter is the right time to do this. Is not. The, 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 the end of quarter report as to what happened 
last three months. It's it not is the only that. Not only it's not that. only that. Most yeah. of the time, agencies make it that because they want to show you the up and to the right and tell you that they're doing a fucking great job. They're, they're, they may or may not be, but it's the blueprint for what you're going to do tomorrow. And that is a completely different thing. And I, I don't, for the life of me, understand why most relationships are built where the report that it's a review of what happened instead of a blueprint for tomorrow. I call it reporting the news. I, I use that all the time. Like, oh, you're just reporting the news. I don't and need you to report this, the news. Yeah. I can read the news myself. I can throw yeah. the news into chat GPT. Right. And, 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 and some agencies do, right? And you'll find, <laughs> and, and you, can, you can see that this is a problem. If your in-house person or your third-party vendor is reading you their PowerPoints of what happened, right? right? You can all read. So you don't need that. You want it's, the, I, we have this thing where data without insight is just a number. You want the right. insight, right? Insight and, and analysis. Yeah, insight and analysis. And the thing that I always tell people to ask is, okay, look, where we've been, that is the starting point. What do we do? You know, that, that gives context for the conversation, but that's one third of the conversation. The second third is, what did we learn? What did we learn from what we did? And yeah. then the third part of the conversation is, what are we going to do differently now based on what we learned? That's the key right. to develop, to distilling insight and analysis, not just traffic's up 10% from last month. Great. Because is it's that good? Is that bad? Right. Is it bad? I don't. I don't know if that, what is that? What are you telling me? What's the insight here? Well, what did we learn? It's really good if your agency has convinced you that traffic from SEO is the number one thing that you should be looking at. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. What's the best way? I, I'm going to give one more KPI that I think is important. Okay. We, we have talked about how Direct response is part of the marketing puzzle, but it's not the entire marketing puzzle. It's getting increasingly difficult to draw a pretty pie graph as to where your, your business is coming from or your consultations are coming from. Multi-touch attribution, dark social, brand, billboards, radio, all these things working together. So I do think you have to create what I will call the big average. All of your stuff, all the good things, whether it's consultations or new clients or revenue, whatever that number you're looking at is, divided by all of your marketing money, right? It's your big average. And what we're finding is the firms that are growing are investing in multi-channel strategies. And you don't have perfect insight into that one channel, that how that one individual channel is performing because it doesn't operate in a vacuum. And so you need to look at the big average. What does that big average tell you? Is that okay with you from a cost per consultation basis? Is it getting worse? Is it getting better? As we've spent more money, has that big average gotten, that ratio, has that gotten better or worse? Right? Like, are you, so th that number, while very, very much not a good MBA answer, is your reality. Well, and, and, the, and you talk about all this all the time, and I gave you a, shout um, on LinkedIn about this. You have to have the dual source attribution. You have to, however you're doing it, however you're asking, who can we thank for sending us, for you sending us, uh, sending us to you? And even if we could get it wrong sometimes, or how did you hear about us? However, you're going to do that. You have to do that. I, I mean, again, how many, I'm seeing more and more in that qualitative attribution field, things like private Facebook group that we're in. Yes. Uh, you know, LinkedIn, um, other types of content vehicles. And, and again, I, I did, I was using the example for attorney sync on LinkedIn, but I looked at the last six of my sources, lawyer, Facebook group, Google tech show, LinkedIn, lunch, our legal marketing, lawmatics webinar. You need that at your law firm. hundred percent. And as you review this, you need to get dirty in it. Like you need to roll up your sleeves and get intimate with the data sorry <laughs> Gee, if you like to rephrase what i just said please go <laughs> ahead up, and do so roll up your sleeves to get intimate with your data that is that's an image i'm typing that I'm, that's All my right. next prompt i'm creating my next no, no, social no, we, post no we we now have a title for the episode um <laughs> all right <laughs> so do that do all of these things um because otherwise you're going to repeat what you did last quarter exactly don't do the same thing and expect something different to happen
With that, we are now really out of time, not just segment time, but we really have to go. Uh, Conrad, thanks so much for making it. Um, really You're appreciate welcome. You I apologize out. for the snafu. And uh, I hope I hope some of the conversation that happened just four feet to my right did not make it into the audio pickup. I didn't hear it, but you Good. will look forward to hear about it in the news on the next episode. Money makes a money makes a it makes a world go round. Money makes a world go yeah, money round. make a world go round. Money makes a world go round. Yeah, money make a world go 